Okay, good evening guys. Before we start, as always, let's do a custom instant poll. Let's check everyone hear the volume correctly. Put on your screens now, let me know the sound's perfect, too loud or too low. Just indicating the usual weight. Okay, that's perfect for the majority of people. Standard setting, so it should be fine. Excellent, great guys. Okay, what I talk about tonight is uh, channel trading. So, I quite like channel trading to be honest. I don't use it as much, perhaps these days, as uh, as I could do. Mainly because I like channel trading when there's no real direction in the market. I think um, trading channels works best when we're just ebbing and flowing and there's no real market direction. As we all know, there's clearly a lot of market direction at the minute. Uh, quite some savage moves today. Uh, quite an interesting one if you were short the S&P, you know, when the data from the GDP came out and the market's rocketing up. So it was an opportunity to make money. Don't worry, I didn't buy it either. But, you know, these things happened. It's all about, you know... Timing your timing your entries and waiting for the big moves, but certainly a lot of good technical moves out there right now, and also some uh, some interesting kind of fundamental slants on the market. So for a start, as always, risk warning: that spread betting, safety trading, both carry high risk or capital, possibility of losing more than initial investments. These products may be suitable for investors and all intended for people of the age of 18. Please ensure you follow whether it's involved in necessary seek independent financial advice. Views and comments to the presentation not the views of any trader. The provisions of this information should be not construed in any circumstances, be it a recommendation or solicitation to buy or sell any security or financial instrument mentioned herein. In trader.com uh, assumes no responsibility for your trading results. Okay, so channel trading. It's based upon the observation and tendency that many financial instruments um, they maintain a set of direction for a period of time. Okay, so a channel is defined when an instrument price is confined between two upper and lower parallel bands. Uh, the lower is considered support and the upper is resistance. Now, I think the key point in this is that, again, just as we draw in trend lines, we have to understand that it has to touch at least two points to be a significant point of interest, a significant level of support and resistance. Um, a lot of people kind of have different views about this and often get you know questions asked, do we use the tops or bottoms of both candles or do we uh, use the opens and closes uh, of the candles? <clears throat> and my, my advice is really use the, the line of best fit. Okay, you're never going to get a perfect trend line. You're never going to get a perfect um, level of support and resistance because you're always going to get tested and you know slightly, you know, broken through. The market is so volatile. You don't just have the that you know stop momentum at these in these levels. Think about it. You know, again, like a train hitting a wall. You know, it's going to go through the wall a little bit if there's enough momentum. Doesn't mean it's not going to stop. Okay, so. Really, again, it's all about drawing the lines of best fit unless you want to go the more technical route and draw in things like um, you know, standard deviation lines, etc., etc. Well, I think that's right, John. I think, like, like many things, I don't think people... I think, you know, again, it's like the universe question. You know, there's enough... If the universe is, is, is completely infinite, then eventually there'll be, you know, another John, another Steve having this conversation, maybe another parallel universe. It's you, John, teaching me. You know, that's how crazy the world is. So, again, it's not about making, you know, trend lines that nobody else sees. The whole point of trend lines is the self-fulfilling, that the more people look at the same kind of areas and trend lines, the more likely is the market is to react to them. But, again, yes, I think you're right. That not, I, don't, I don't think that two people will ever not draw the same trend line. Again, I think there's enough charting around the world to make sure that a lot of people will get similar trend lines. The point I'm trying to make is they need to look right. Okay, so there is no perfect way, I would say, of drawing the perfect trend line. There's just a better way of drawing something that fits and looks right. If it looks like a parallel channel and it fits right in the chart, then it is a parallel channel. Okay, a lot of people are looking for that exact price, that exact turning price, that exact entry point, and it just doesn't exist. Okay, the markets are, are too crowded, too volatile, and that's why I like my um, scaling presentation, because that means you can build a position around the number of prices and fade out that volatility. Okay, so the, you're not looking for that exact entry price. You can trade smaller price and build positions. And I think that's a lot more useful in volatile markets than any other kind of charting approach. So different types of trend channels. Okay, so there's ascending, descending, and sideways. Again, as I said, for me, trend channels really work for me in a sideways market where you don't have much uh, momentum or volume. Okay, you can just buy and sell at support and resistance, and that's why I use trend channels the most. Descending and descending, okay, they give you a kind of, you know, an entry and an exit point as we'll go through, and it gives you a bit more of the boundaries. But again, you can do that from normal market action and the candlestick formations and Bollinger Bands. But again, if you need that extra confirmation in an uptrend or downtrend, then you can use the different types of, of channel. So ascending is just when the price exhibits a positive slope with rising tops and rising bottoms. 
descending when the price exhibits a ne negative slope with falling tops and falling bottoms. So bullish and bearish, simple as. And then sideways is just where we really move in a sideways direction. There's no particular movement or aggressive trend. We're just moving between support and resistance. So there's different types of channels, okay? So then there's diverging sideways, horizontal, and consolidation. Okay, so diverging sideways is the best described as when a combination of rising tops and falling bottoms, such as the price action diverges, yet the overall pivot line remains roughly the same. Okay, it sounds complicated, but it's not. Okay, it just means that the market's moving sideways and the price exact, you know, it, re it remains kind of fairly level. Okay, so, you know, there's not that much distance between the top and the bottom of support and resistance, and we're just moving along the pivot. Then horizontal is when the lines... Uh, support and resistance bands are parallel to each other, but there's minimum or no visible slope. Then consolidation, and that's a combination of falling tops, rising bottoms. So the price action converges towards the pivot, and then equilibrium might be uh, achieved momentarily. So that's, again, a type of channel that comes together. So here's just a good example of a sideways channel. So this is why I like um, channels the best, because although the market's moving in a downward direction, it's doing it fairly gradually. So this is what I said to you again, is if you're going to draw in a sideways channel, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? So what you're looking for is the market to move down. Well, you don't have to look for anything, okay? What, we, what we're going to say is the market's moved down, it's found support, okay? And it's broke through resistance, and it's moving around. But what I like to see in any kind of trending channel, chart, trend line, is where support becomes resistance. So let's face it, the market breaks through here, doesn't make a low. So we could draw... A line in here, okay, to say that rent. I'm not it's drawing proper. Okay, sorry, guys, I'm drawing proper. So this could be support, okay, because that's the low of the market, and from that point the market's moved up. But what we'll say is that really the market's moved up from this point, but after this blue line here, we don't know anything. Okay, so all we know right now is what's happened in this yellow area. Okay, so this is the time frame we're looking at. This is the period of data we have, okay? So what we're looking at is what's happening now. The market's moved down, okay? It's come back up, and it's found that the market didn't want to sell below these prices. So that'll be our first line of support, I guess, okay? And then this line doesn't really come into be resistance, but it comes into be support, okay? So we've got more bullish momentum in the market, but we could say that realistically the market's found some support here. Okay, and remember the principle that support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support. So we could draw a line in here for argument's sake because we found support on it. Okay, so all we know right now is that the, the price action has moved down, it's rejected an aggressive move lower, it's come back and it's moved up. It's not made a higher high yet, so really what we're looking for, we're looking for shorts, okay, shorts to come into the market. So we move past this blue line and this is the future. So we see the market really comes down, a bit of support and resistance again, so we could extend our line along, and we say, okay, well, the market's come back here, found a little bit of a bounce in, it's broken through. Where does it get to? Our lower line. Okay, so our lower line that we've drawn in becomes the bottom. But the market then recovers a little bit, see a little doji, and the market comes back up to this area of resistance again. So although we've got this overall level, which works really nicely, we might start to draw another line across to give ourselves another line of support. So let's just move... The, the interest point to here. So all we're concentrating on is now. We don't know anything that's happened in the past, in the future here. All we know what's happened in the past and what's happened in this box here now. Okay. So the same situation. Markets moved down, rejected the overall low, but we're seeing more support on the bottom. So yes, you could draw your trend channel if you wanted on this lower line. But for me, you start to get a lot more action. Okay, of people rejecting shorts on this line. See, look. But that's, that's, again, we have to look at these charts and understand the market pushes to an extent to here. However, it finds real kind of support here because the market blips through quickly but then comes back to here, and that's when the buying action starts to come back in. So really you can see all in action here, all the action happens within these two parallel lines. Okay, So you draw your support resistance line across again, and you're starting to see that you don't have to trade any of this because it doesn't mean anything. But you're starting to build up a picture of what's happening by drawing your trend lines across, okay? So basically what we know is now, from here to here, the market is finding good resistance in the channel and coming back down, and from here to here, good support. So take that away, you draw your lines across, and all of a sudden, the picture becomes a lot clearer. 
So based upon your analysis, from here to here, this is a good trend channel. So all you do from now on is you use the trend channel. Every time we get above it, you sell into it. You buy back at support. Okay, we break back down here. Okay, but we don't aggressively close outside of it. The next candle takes us back into the trend. Okay, so we know the overall direction of the market is down. Okay, because that was set by this down move here. We couldn't make a higher high. So what we're looking for, okay, when the market loses momentum, is to utilize this trend channel to buy, to sell, to buy, to sell all along. Yeah, and then eventually when the market does break, we're ready for it to break on the downside. So when we finally take the long here and it doesn't and comes down, we sell. Okay, we look for the next logical point of support and we sell into the break. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight opportunities, maybe nine, to buy and sell on the trend channel, and then you're ready for the overall trend to take over. So as long as you don't hold this long here for any reason, okay, further than here, then really you've made in the overall trend channel, you've made seven, eight, nine opportunities to make you know a good amount of money in tick terms, and all you do is you don't hold on once we break out the low of the support, okay, and get all your profit taken out. So sideways channels when the market isn't moving, again, they don't have to look pretty, they don't have to be perfect, you don't have to get each line touching, just draw yourself a line of best fit, and as long as we don't significantly close above, yeah, or below it, yeah, then the market is still acting as a, as, as a trend channel, okay, I mean, again, when you see these double bottoms, market goes straight back in to the trend channel, again, the reversal pattern here, market breaks out, can't find any buyers, doji market comes back down so again i like sideways trend channels because when there is no real direction in the market which you know again we see direction here a little bit of direction here but then for all these candles we don't see anything until the market breaks here that's a long time to wait in this particular product before you know you get a directional shift so in the meantime you can make 10 15 20 ticks just by buying the lows or selling the highs Okay, so that for me is nice because you know if you do break this overall level of support here, you're out. So you're never going to take a big losing trade on because every time it comes down to here, you're out. You're out. You're out. Then you just buy back into the channel and you've got your line of resistance for your exit point. Okay, does that make sense? So John's just asking, what's the minimum price range on a sideways channel that you consider trading? Well, again, John, I mean, it's think about the average trading range, okay, the average candle. Okay, so the average candle, the biggest one in this formation is here. Okay, so that's potentially how far the market can move in one candle. So just take that and draw it onto a, tra onto a channel. If it looks right, then it will be. You know, if you're drawing a trend channel that's only five ticks, then how long is that realistically going to last for? I'd say realistically, pick the biggest candle, okay, on the, uh, on the previous 50 traded candles on the chart, and then use that. And if that fits into the trend channel, then the trend channel is going to be valid. Okay, that's a good tip. So an example of an uptrend, okay? So this is a reversal, okay? So we've got the market come down aggressively. I mean, again, you could even call that a down channel if you wanted. But when the down channel's finished, we know that the market's going to recover. So we have an overall level of support down here where the market won't break. We know the market really has found resistance here. So once we break that, then we start to draw our trend channel on key lines of support. So key lines of support, key lines of resistance, and again, look how the market works. Now, obviously, this is an example that I've picked out. So the reason I picked the example out is, is it works. So the market is sold off, you know, in this nice trend channel. We've found good support down here, so the market's going to reverse. What I'd like to do is draw a Fibonacci from here to here, from the low to the high, and I guarantee the low to the high is going to mean that the 50% will be somewhere around here. So you know when the market's found support along here, yeah, and it starts to move in this trend channel. So you have a bit of a noise here. And it looks like the market's moving sideways, so maybe you'd ignore that. But once you break the resistance level, which again has been good resistance here, we can see that once we've drawn these two points in, that they extend past here, that that's a bottom line of a trend channel. And we've got you know a bit of a breakout here, but the lines from here, okay, we have to extend the lines from here to here, okay, take a bit of leap of faith. But we know this is now an up channel, so we're buying the lows, yeah and then selling the highs. Like I said, I mean, it's a bit of an art form, all these kind of things, but really when the market, again, has found this, this hard line of support, 
okay, then what you're looking for is the market to behave in an uptrend. So you draw your 50% fib in to give you a target on the upside. Your 100% will be up here, okay, and then you draw your trend channels based upon the best line of fit, okay. So once you draw them in, you know, the picture starts to look a bit nicer. I mean, you might have to wait till further in the trend channel to happen, but basically, once the market's rejected this low move here, okay, everything in this channel now is fair play, okay. Every time we hit the low, the market goes to the opposite end. So again, you want to tie in your Bollinger Bands, tie in your moving average, but every time we're at the low, we look to try and hit this top end of resistance. Okay, so it's not always perfect, but it doesn't matter. You know, there's enough ticks within this range in order to buy the lows and not significantly, if at all, go offside. Yeah, before you can then buy back into the range and have a clear target of where to get out. So again, it's all about timing it. You know, the market is aggressively sold off for a reason. Then it's found a good level of support and the market wants to retrace. So we can see an uptrend, drawing your lines of resistance, okay? Draw a parallel line in for support, best fit. And again, buy low, sell high. Simple as that. So the first and foremost common way of drawing um, a, a channel is by plotting parallel lines, as I've just demonstrated. Now you can draw them with a the naked eye and try and connect as many points as we can. The whole point to remember is they're never going to be perfect. Okay, it's as simple as that. You cannot make uh, the perfect trend channel, and I don't think you'd really want to. If something's too perfect and has never been tested, then you're setting yourself up for a breakout and the market is to be pushed through. So really just make it look as feasible as possible. And the more it works for you, okay, the more it's going to work for other people. So draw it in as a best line of fit and just to pay attention to the candlestick bodies. No, don't pay attention too much to wicks. Okay? The body is where the market starts to buy at every price. So when you see big candle bodies, that's the price traded at every price. Green candles going up, red candles going down. Okay? When you see the wicks, that means that prices are missed out, that the market is spiked down. Okay? So you don't want to pay attention necessarily when you're drawing your trend lines to the wicks because that's where the market has been aggressively hit. Okay, when you when you draw your trend lines and your trend channels to the, to the actual bodies, the candle bodies, the opens and closes themselves, that's where the price has been traded. Okay, so that's much more valuable in kind of plotting um, trend lines and that kind of term. But again, as I said, drawing with the naked eye, and as long as it looks kind of right, you know, who's to say it's not? And if it works for you and you trade from it and make money, then it's right. So obviously, there's a more scientific way, as there always is with mathematical-based formulas and trading. And that's using linear regression lines to plot the pivot lines. So that's basically opening up your charts and drawing linear-based um, uh, lines, as simple as that. So not drawing it freehand and, and by the naked eye, but by drawing it on, uh, on you know, particular uh, deviations around the pivot. So the main ones you can use, and I'll be totally honest, guys, I can't say hand on heart in my professional career I've ever drawn in any of these. Okay? So I'm always honest with you guys. I'm not saying they won't work for you. I'm not saying that they're not worth investigating. But me personally, I have never drawn any of these. Okay, so just putting it out there as always. So standard deviation, standard error, and the RAFF channel. Okay, so I'll go through them, but it's easier if I go through them in the chart. But standard deviation is two lines that can form a standard deviation channel if they're parallel to the linear line of regression trend line. They usually set two standard deviations either side of the regression line. So basically, like Bollinger Bands. Standard error channel. Standard error can also be used in place of standard deviation, preferred by some investors, as it's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So that just means it's a square root based upon the amount of data you've done. So again, a 20 period uh, moving average is 20 periods. A 20 period Bollinger Band two standard deviation is two regression lines, two standard deviations around 20 periods of data and the 20 period moving average. So that's all that is. It's just, uh, you know, lines instead of bands. So Bollinger Bands are just like standard deviation channels. Then you've got the RAFF channel, and that's the distance between the channel lines and the regression line, and it's the greatest distance of any closing price from the regression line. Okay? So basically, just channels based upon standard uh, deviation. Okay? So it's not actually that complicated. So we can see in the chart here, that we've got basically your P 
pivot line here and your sample data. So sample data is this, okay, from here to here. Here's your, um, you know, your, your main pivot line. So that's just when you drag from here to here, yeah, the market will draw the standard uh, error lines, these RF chines and the standard deviation based upon the linear line of regression, which is this, yeah, an upward middle point between two bands. So again, trader talk and charting talk like to make these things sound particularly difficult and complicated, but they're not. Okay, the standard error is just as we described. The standard deviation, okay, it is is like Bollinger Bands. That you know, that's the two standard deviations away from this blue line. Standard error uh, is just the square root, and the RAF channel is just again the linear regression. So again, you just put these lines in, and they're drawn for you, and you just see how they react in the markets. So to be honest, only really the standard error and RAF channel come into play. So again, we've got the standard error channel here. So we start moving away from the moving average. You know, the market moves to these lines. doesn't break as far as the RAF channel. So again, you use that as your trend channel. When we, do, when we close back inside, we sell back down to the moving average. It breaks down, goes to the standard error again. Once we, again, once we break up and then can't come down, we send, sell down to the RAF channel. So this is where it starts to get a little bit messy, to be honest. What, you, what I would stick to is we know it's an uptrend. Okay, so all our lines are drawn around this midpoint, okay, and we know the market's in an uptrend just because we're at a 45 degree angle and the market's moving up. So what do we do? We buy. Okay, when the market's low and hits these channels, we buy. Breaks through, yeah, we buy at the next channel. Market comes up, we could average in back to the midpoint. So we're looking for the low points of the chart to buy, okay? So we get maybe one, two, three, four, maybe five really good opportunities just based upon that standard error channel, okay, to buy back to the moving average. But if you want to do it the other way, okay, when we get above the moving average, we find that as, you know, a line of support because it doesn't really work here so much. That's not a great example. But here, a good example, here a good example, and here a good example, and here a good example. So again, it's all about timing, isn't it, guys? It's depending how you want to use the channel, how you want to trade. For me, how I would do it is I would always trade from the downside. So I know we're in an up channel, so I would always buy at these lines, and if we ever broke through like we do here, I'd buy here, and I'd average doubly back into that, yeah, expecting the market to come back up. So I'd only really trade this one, two, three, maybe four times. Okay, that's the only way I would be interested in trading in this market. When the market's overextended, I know it's an up move, it's overextended, it's broke through the standard error channel. That's great. I love things like that because I'm happy to negatively average back down to the next line of support knowing that all the longs will get out of the market here. I'll buy all the longs back and then I'll let them come back up. But that's just my style of trading. The whole point is by me showing you these things is to show you how you can trade them. You might be very, very risk adverse. So you wait for this line to be tested. Okay, and you don't get until here, yeah, until the market is significantly printed one green candle and then looks to go up. So you might buy here. You know, again, you might buy here on this bounce here. But <clears throat> the whole point is I can't trade for you. I can only tell you how these things work. Okay, so you've got a sample of data you want to go from. So again, you have to do it in the right way. Okay, so the market's moved down. Okay, so you know the market's moved down from here. So it's looking like it's moving up. So you take your sample data for me when the market gets to about 50% of this down move. Okay, so that's there. Where, you know, again, these are all rough. So what I would do, sorry, God, I hate this system. Let me start again. Down move here, but we find overall support here, don't we? Like we saw in the previous chart. This down move, the 50% would be roughly here. Okay, so once we've hit that 50%, that's when I would start to draw in my lines. Okay, so again, there'd be no lines in here. I wouldn't know what would happen. But as soon as we hit that 50% and come back down, I would draw my regression lines from here to here. Yeah, and that would be your midpoint. And that would mean the lines will continue into the future because you don't know what any, any of this is yet. So once you've drawn your lines from here to here, it'll extend and you get your error lines here. RAF, yeah, and standard deviation down here. So what that means is, 
you don't know you know what's happened here how the market's behaved it's come down but you know the overall trend is up so all you do is you buy yep you buy low it's your next point of interest okay does that make sense we all always go with the trend the overall trend was down it's reversed you've hit the 50 percent but the market is still in an uptrend here until we break this overall support here so you buy on all these extended lines through okay so the trouble is when you've got these examples it looks easy doesn't it well I mean you can't you can sell the midline if you want John I mean, it's entirely up to you as I said you know that midline is just a sample of data okay so the sample of data of your midline is the point where all these lines are drawn from okay but the way I trade and the way I find it most rewarding to trade is going with the overall trend as we know so when the market has found support down here okay and hasn't moved any lower you know that when the market's low there's more buyers than sellers so yes if you want to sell the midpoint you can and these bands work in exactly the same way points of attraction but for me I'd rather buy low yeah and sell high as there's more bar the buyers and more momentum into an up move than there is a down move okay so again John entirely up to you uh, for me, I only go back to the absolute basics. Well, yeah, I mean, you can also take profit on the midline, of course. I mean, the whole point is your midline is where the markets want to get to. Okay, so, on, you know, if you're buying low, then you want to get out of the midpoint. Okay, if you want to be a little bit more aggressive, when we break the midpoint, you try and buy into the next level up. But, you know, as you can see, you know, what goes up does come down. So, if you try and do that, look how aggressive the market comes down. So, for me, I'd be very wary about being overly aggressive. I'd buy low, and maybe, you know, when you buy here, sell some, sell half your profit at the next line. Because, you know, support can be resistance. Luckily, it doesn't, and it breaks through. Yeah, and it eventually gets to the, to the midpoint. But, I mean, that's one good trade. You know, you can make it, that could be the, your trade of the month. But, you know, again, it doesn't always work like that. You know, you can buy, you know, the midpoint here, it rejects and comes all the way down. So, it's about taking profit and, and the edge, getting the edge in trading. So you know this is your midpoint. You know if the market hits down here or hits down here, there's a buying opportunity. Okay, that's how I see it. So I buy here and I buy here. So that's two trades in all that data. But if you have enough size on it and you wait and you're patient enough, then that's two really good trades. You don't have to be making money on every single trade. That's not what we're doing here. We're getting the percentage edge. Okay. And the percentage edge is telling us when we've drawn a midpoint from here to here, if we hit on the low side, there's more buyers than there are sellers. So we buy on these lines and we get out of the midpoint. That's that's how I would interpret that chart. But again, guys, find a sample of data when it's moving and just draw on a standard error, an RAF, and a standard deviation and see how it works. Okay, when you've drawn them in, you know, just think of that of the, as the unknown. You don't know what's going to happen. But then follow the lines into the future. And if they start to work, yeah, then trade with them. That's how, that's how you do it. That's how you get the confidence to do it yourself. So instead of using off-the-shelf strategies for channel trading, you can you know, put your own ingredients and build your own strategy. So your timing, your exit, your capital management, your stops and limits. So the entry, I mean, going with the trend, as I've just said, is the safest method and enjoys the highest rate of success. Okay, so the channel's broken. That's going to be great because you're going to get a lot of people caught out the market's going to move in one direction against the trend very, very quickly. But for the rest of the time, the trend works. So that's why people go with the trend, because it's your friend. So in that example that I showed you last time, the market was moving up, so I'd buy low and I'd sell high. You know, it's no more difficult than that. You know, it's, it's not trying to be too clever with these charts. You know, just because you've got a good trend channel doesn't mean you should buy at every low point or sell at every high point. It's use it with the RSI. Use it with your Bollinger Bands, use it with the fundamentals and try and pick out them two or three good opportunities in that channel and smash them. Use as much size as, as your capital allows. And the more you wait for great opportunities like that, the more confident you're going to be as a trader. Yeah, you don't have to be in the market every second of every day. Yeah, it's a percentage game. So if you can give yourself a good edge and a good trade and a good entry point, then the rest takes care of itself. So again, you can use things like your overall trend lines, your trend channels, and things like MACD. To be honest, I'd rather use RSI than MACD, but you know, MACD, stochastics, they work just as well in the markets. 
So this example, again, is just showing us that we don't know what's happened. This is the future. But we've drawn up some levels of resistance, drawn up some levels of support. Okay, so we don't know what's going to happen, do we? But we know we've got a downward move market that's, you know, coming back. You know, so we're looking for that 50% somewhere up here of this down move to be attacked. We know that we're finding resistance from the market here. We're finding support on the market here. So what happens? Well, we use MACD. Okay, as the MACD, okay, points to a low and it's coming back up, we're showing strength comes back into the market. That coincides with the low. Okay, where we've hit support, the market moves up. Okay, so we didn't know that was going to happen. Move through the chart, same scenario. MACD is coming back up. We're at a bottom. Market rises. Market moves back up from low to the high. At a bottom, market moves up. Okay, same scenario. MACD comes back into positive. Market's at a low. Market moves up. And that's we didn't know what had happened in these boxes. We're just drawing and extending the lines on. That's our trend channel and operation. That's us using MACD for a reversal. We're at a low, we're at support. MACD is coming positive. That puts momentum into the market. Okay, so one, two, three, four opportunities in that channel to absolutely smash it. Okay, what do you do? Get some profit out of the midpoint. The rest, try and wait for it to hit the line of resistance. So if that you only trade that four times, you can't not make money because you don't go offside. Okay. Okay, Warren. I mean, yeah, the ATR indicator. I'm not a fan of, to be honest. But I mean, you can use it. Um, you know, if you, if you take profit or you stop loss. I don't really trade when I'm, when I'm watching the markets with a stop loss. Okay, that's, that's, I can. I've earned that right to do that. So why would I be? I wouldn't be so concerned with a stop loss or take profit in these kind of scenarios. That's why I'm using the trend channel. Okay, I'm using the trend channel because I know ultimately if it breaks below it, I'm out of the trade. Okay, if I'm out, we're trading below this line with any aggression, I'm out of the trade because the market is moving up. So for me, the MACD is just another way of catching that upswing. So when the market goes from negative to positive, we're on the support, you're trying to get some profit out. Okay, you might not get the whole move, you might only get to the moving average, but you've got enough size off to make that trade pay. You know where you take profit is. Okay, the opposite boundary, because that's why you're trading a trend channel system. And if you want an, another way of um, taking your profit, you're drawing a moving average. Okay, so that's what I do rather than an ATR indicator. I just use the moving average. Okay, when we reject breaking out of the trend and we come back into the trend channel, then the place you take your profit is at the moving average. Okay, so yeah, obviously you can use whatever indicators you want. Absolutely, Warren, that's a good point. You raise a very good point here. But for me, Okay, once I've drawn that line in, that is my stop loss. Once we aggressively come out of the, this range here, I'm out of the trade because it's not a trend channel trade. So that's where you have to use your strategy in the right way, in the right market conditions. And again, other indicators might enhance it. You know, you can trade MACD, you can trade Stochastics, you can trade RSI, whatever, whatever works for you. This is just an example. And again, of course, this example works. I won't be able to teach it. When the market goes from negative to positive, right at low, the market comes back into this ch trend channel range. Okay, but yes, other indicators can be used in conjunction with uh, trend channels for sure. So you exit. So obviously, your exit point is when the channel recovery climbs back into the channel. So for me, you can use pivot lines. You know, pivot lines are always good, but a moving average is just as good. For me, what I like to do is draw a nice trend channel like that. And then I'd certainly um, put uh, Bollinger Bands around it because Bollinger Bands are just like, you know, a good trend channel, but with a bit more kind of flexibility because, you know, they, they can move with extreme market action. Well, okay, Jurgen, what about a shorter time frame? Well, the thing like anything is, isn't it? Um, the shorter the time frame, the more signals you get, but the less significant the move is. Okay, so the higher the time frame, the more that trend channel holds on a higher time frame, and by higher, I mean 15 minutes and above, you know, the more money you're gonna make from it. If that's a, a five or one minute chart, you're not gonna be able to trade every high and every low, okay, unless you're trading with a computer. So the higher the time frame, the more valid it is. I would say anything 15 minute and hourly, that's what you want to be looking at on your, um, on, on your channels. Anything below that is becomes a lot more difficult to get in and out, okay, because you just, 
you're going to be dealing with too much volatility and too much price action. So for me, I use trend channels on 15 minutes, hourlies, dailies. Okay, so the higher the time frame, the more significant the move. So obviously, boundary is going to be your significant, you know, me, you know your your ultimate price exit point. Okay, so for me, once we're back inside the trend channel, the first point is the pivot or the moving average. Your second exit point is the opposite band, and it has to be that. Or why would you trade a trend channel? The whole point of drawing a trend channel is it's got parallel boundaries. Okay, if you're just drawing in a straight line, you just be buying at support. Okay, the whole point of having them parallel lines is if it hits one, it has to aim for the other. Or if it doesn't, then it's not a, a parallel trend channel. So don't use it. You're just using support on a trend line. Okay, the whole point of having these trend channels, what makes them so powerful, is they have to work on support and resistance, or they're not a channel. So that's your ultimate exit point. But again, I would always say be prudent and take some profit out as you're on side. And the most logical point to take your first point of profit would be the moving average. Okay. So obviously there's in, entry and exit styles, and you know scaling in and scaling out is another individual presentation that I've done. Okay. Okay. Another question: pennant and triangles do the same. What's the difference? Well, pennant and triangles they come together, they come to a point. Okay. So that is the volatility is is diverging to the midpoint, is diverging to a point. Okay, so the move gradually gets smaller and smaller. When you're using things like trend channels, the parallel, okay, so they'll move in the direction of the market, be it up, be it down, be it sideways, but they'll be parallel to each other. Okay, so they don't come to a point like a pennant or a triangle. They just stay equal distance apart until the trend breaks. Okay, so your pennants, you're looking for a reduction in the volatility in market activity, so it's coming from a big end like a triangle to a point. Whereas a trend channel stays consistently parallel yeah, to the support and resistance lines until we get a break to the high or the low side. That's the main difference. But good question. Good question. So scaling in, scaling out is just basically you know, taking your profit when you're scaling in. You know, you're putting more into your trade as it goes on side. When you're scaling out, you're taking profit as it is on side. So again, if you want to use a perfect example, we've got you know this example of the pound versus the dollar. So we've got our level of support, got our level of resistance, got our midpoint in. Okay, so what we're looking for is the perfect area to buy. Perfect area to buy is here. Okay, market goes up, comes back down to our midpoint. Okay, rejects hitting that lower band. So we buy more at the midpoint and we get out at the opposite boundary. So that particular section here is the perfect trade. Okay, market goes up, doesn't reject the moving average and come back to the lower band and then continues higher to the opposite boundary. So in that particular chart, that's the perfect trade. But you can trade that however you want. Okay, if you want to buy here, you can scale out at the moving average and get some of your trade out. So take profit here. And as the market rebounds and goes up, take your ultimate profit at the opposite boundary. So you've made money here, banked it here, made more money here. Or you can be aggressive, buy here, buy here, and sell here. Like I said, it's not down to me how you trade this system. But if you know you found support here, you know eventually you're going to have to find resistance here. But how, how long you hold on to it and how brave you are, that's down to your strategy. But I'm saying if you use parallel boundaries, that eventually they have to work. I mean, look at this one here. This is the perfect trade. From here to here, the market comes down, bounces. And within five candles, has hit the opposite boundary. But it just depends how long you want to hold. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these these are just examples. Okay? So these are just charts to illustrate graphically what's happening. We're not using a particular you know time frame. You know, we're just using it as you know an educational tool. Okay? So we're using this and a large sample of data because it clearly shows the you know support and resistance. You know, if this was a minute chart, you know, it wouldn't be of much value. But we're showing, you know, a large period of data to show how a market behaves, you know, over an extended period of time. So when we're using the parallel line theory, the market finds support. And when it, again, where's it going to go to? The moving average. It's either going to bounce back to support or continue to the opposite boundary. So that's why I like trend channels, because it gives you an end, end, end point 
and an exit point. So the whole point is, if the market breaks down, you're out of the trade, that's fine. But if you're long, you stay long because it has to eventually hit the point, the opposite boundary. Because if it doesn't, then it's not a trend channel. Simple as that. Okay? So the whole point is of, 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 tr of trading the low point and buying into an up move is you get in the edge. So it's up to you how long you want to hold the trade for. You can hold every trade to the moving average and take a little bit of profit. Or you can be brave, hold your trade for a much longer period of time and keep buying in as it goes up and then sell at the high point. All I'm saying is, you know, if you've got two parallel points of entry and exit, then that's the hard part of trading, okay? That, that's taking care of you. Okay, once you're trading inside the channel, the difficult part becomes how long you want to hold it for. And the longer you hold it, the more money you're going to make. It's as simple as that. Because you know when you buy here, you're buying at the low. So it has to go to the opposite boundary at some point. But you might want to take profit all the way through here. So every time it comes to the moving average, sell out. Buy, sell, buy, sell. Or alternatively, buy here, sell here. It just depends on your strategy, how long you want to wait for. As I said, I'm doing a whole strategy presentation, just like the Trade for Life course, a three parts. And I'll show you how you can build up your strategy. And the first point will be, can you hold overnights? If you can't hold overnight positions, then you don't get to trade that. You can never trade that because you'd have to wait overnight. Yeah. So if you trade overnights, that's fine. You can stay long yeah, and buy here and sell here. If you can't take overnight positions, then you, you can confine to this, confine to this, confine to this. You can buy here, you can sell here, you can buy here, you can sell here. Okay, But you can't do a big long trade because you can't hold overnight positions. So that changes your strategy completely. So again, capital management, basic rule is only commit 1% to 2% of your capital on a single trade. Okay, Simple enough. Okay, If you don't use more than that, then you're never going to lose big. But for me, if you're going to be using a strategy like this, then you know you're getting the lower high of the market. So you can commit a little bit more of your capital because you're waiting for that trade. So again, trend channel sideways just means that you don't need a particular aggressive, you know, stop loss kind of trade. I mean, again, if the market breaks and looks to make a directional move above resistance, you get out. But every signal you get, look, wicks, no bodies, wicks, no bodies. Just false breakouts, wicks, no candle bodies. So you know that when we don't close significantly with a green candle out of here, the market is going to come back to the range, and it does. Okay, so try and use things like you know your MACD, your stochastics. When the market looks to turn here, yeah, look for to break back in and buy into the strength. Again, low point, market's low, buy back in. All your oscillators are going to be lagging indicators, so there's nothing that's going to give you that instant switch to buy. But play it percentages. You know, you've got your trend channel. Every time you back, if it looks like the market's bottomed out, buy back into the strength. It's as simple as that. So tra trailing stops. I don't think trailing stops work um, for your entry point, but trailing stops definitely work for your exit point. So if you've got into the trend channel and you're above the moving average, put a trailing stop in of, of 5 or 10 ticks. So it means even if the market comes back below the moving average, you're going to get stopped out for, for, for some profit because it's trailing as the market goes in your direction. If you put an overall stop just outside your entry point or on your entry point, then the market can come back to that, you know, again, support before it bounces again and you're out of the trade. So a trailing stop will make sure you bank any kind of profit while the trade is going in, on, on side and continuing to move in the direction you think. So limit orders, again, if you put a limit order around the moving average or just above, or more, just below, should I say, the opposite boundary, then you know you're going to get your profit out again. Very difficult because you know if everyone else is getting out of the moving average, you might miss the best price. But if you put a limit order in, it will take you out at that price and you make, you make sure you're guaranteeing the maximum profit of that move. So what we always see when markets hit a point of extreme support or resistance, there's generally an, an aggressive bounce back. So you're losing profit in that bounce back. If you put an order in just below your target point or below the opposite boundary or moving average, you're getting out for the maximum or the maximum-ish you know, amount of that move you, know, you can realistically hope for. You're never going to get it tick for tick. Okay? But if you get the most of it out of the move you can, 
then the better it's going to be for you. So again, I mean, the, the theory is that if the lines match up, okay, and you find significant support and resistance, then they're going to work into the future. Okay, so we know when the market is really, realistically, that is what the area that we're saying is good resistance. You know, from here to here, it's, it's difficult to say what support is. But as the market moves through, okay, we find support, we find resistance. We find support, we find resistance. Support, resistance, support, resistance. So if you want to, just trade along the moving average. Okay? Once we close significantly above the moving average, buy. Yeah, buy. Yeah, or if you're more aggressive, buy at the low point, get some out of the midpoint moving average. Yeah, if you're more aggressive, buy some into the uh, when we close above the moving average. So it's entirely up to you how you do it. Okay, but the whole point is once once you you don't know what's happened after here, but once it starts to act as a trend channel, you know the boundaries, you know the rules of the game. You buy low, you get some profit out of the moving average, or you buy above the moving average to so the, the opposite midpoint. And again, if it's a trend channel, then these work. These parallel lines work as boundaries. If they don't, then it's not a trend channel. Stop using it as a trend channel. Just draw your line of support in and just buy low. Get out whenever you want. But if you're using it as a trend channel, know that you've got the boundaries. Okay? That's the whole point of using a trend channel for its boundaries. Okay? So higher than 15 minutes, you know, I'd say 15 minutes or hourly for your trend channel. When you get the overall break, fine. But it's a percentage game. In an uptrend, buy low to the midpoint and buy above the midpoint if you want to average. That's as simple as I can make a trend channel. Go with the trend. Again, buy low, sell high. Does that make sense, guys? Is that, is that you know, what, what you wanted to know from trend channels? So, again, as I say, it's a, a trusted technique. Um, you have to identify the market conditions. Don't try and make a trend channel in, in the market when it's not trying to do it. Be careful with your entry point. The entry point is key to this because once you're on side, you know where to take your profit, the midpoint or the opposite boundary. Okay? And don't just trade every opportunity. Back it up with a MACD. Back it up with an RSI. Back it up with you know, some other oscillator to tell you the market's you know, changing its direction. Okay, guys. Well, plenty of new stuff coming up. Um, we've got some non-farm payrolls next Friday, so do join me for that. You know, again, some live trading. I'm doing my uh, Fed minutes and Bank of England minutes on FX Street. Uh, I do a trading clinic every week on FX Street, so plenty of live trading to go through. Anything else you want to know, guys? Follow me on Twitter at Steve Roughly. That's the best way to ask me questions, especially when the markets are trading. Okay, remember. Although the markets have spiked on the uh, on the back of the GDP data from the US today, the fundamentals are that we're going to bomb Syria. We know with Iraq, Afghanistan, history, this is bad. So do not keep any long positions in the stocks and do not keep them over the weekend. Okay, do not do it. So look for shorts, look for that fear to come back into the market, and again, you know, just be vigilant. Be vigilant for comments coming out. Make sure you listen to the squawk and, uh, you know, just be happy. If the market blips 20, 30 ticks, if you get it in your favor, get some profit out. Bank some profit. It's not a time for running trades. The markets are too dangerous. All right, guys. Well, listen, a pleasure as always. Um, anything else you want to know, guys? You know, at Steve Roughly, that's the best way to get a hold of me on Twitter. And, um, you know, that's what it's all about. Uh, Good to see you guys. Good to see you, Jurgen. I'm glad you've uh, done well with your uh, your demo account. Good to see the usual uh, suspects like uh, John Warren uh, and Jeff. Have a great night, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, join me for non-fan payrolls next Friday. Okay. Good trading. Good luck. Thank you.